Hello, and thank you for attending our program, PA Forward as a Foundation for Your Library Strategic Planning. We hope that you are enjoying the 2021 PALA Virtual Annual Conference. Remember that the survey for this program and for other programs will be shared in the chat features throughout the conference, either here in this program or also in the lobby area uh, of, for the conference. And um, please, please fill out the survey and uh, let us know how and how much you like the conference and, and or what we can do to make the conference better. Uh, again, thank you for attending this session. I am going to share my screen at this point. And I'm just going to ask uh, Marcus, can you see my screen at this point in time? Yes, sir. Great. Let's, there we go. Great. Thank you, Marcus, very much. Uh, again, um, our presentation is PA Forward as a foundation for your library strategic planning. I'm joined today by Cheryl Thomas and Marcus Yule, uh, who will also be presenting some, some more examples, some concrete examples of uh, PA Forward as a strategic planning tool. Uh, during the presentation, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about materials that are available for your strategic plan and for your information gathering uh, for your specific library strategic plan, how you can use PA Forward as a framework for your plan. And Cheryl's going to give a concrete library example. And Marcus is going to provide an actual outreach plan that uh, uses PA Forward. Uh, Hello, uh, I am Rob Lesher. I am the PA Forward Program Manager. I work for the Pennsylvania Library Association at the headquarters in Mechanicsburg. Uh, I have uh, been with the Pennsylvania Library Association since 2019. However, I have been a part of the PA Forward Project and the development of the PA Forward Project uh, since about 2010 uh, during the planning stages for, for the initiative. Uh, who am I? Well, I'm a Gen Xer. And really, the only reason I'm telling you this is that as we go through the, uh, today's program, if I happen to say something that just sounds like a Gen Xer, I just wanted you to know that. Uh, and uh, just kind of know that uh, what, it, what my worldview is modeled on. So um, PA Forward is an initiative of the Pennsylvania Library Association. PA Forward um, is based on the premise that literacy is power and that libraries provide the fuel. Uh, PA Forward was developed uh, by a group uh, committee and a task force of librarians and library workers made up of libraries of all types, academic, public, school library, special libraries, and really, it can be used by libraries of any kind to communicate the value and the impact that your services have uh, on your users, on your residents, on the community at large. PA Forward uh, is a project that is made possible in part by the Library Services and Technology Act funds from the US Institute of Museum and Library Services otherwise known as IMLS, as administered by the Pennsylvania Department of Education through the Office of Commonwealth Libraries and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Tom Wolf Governor. So just a little bit more about what PA Forward is. Um, PA Forward um, is premised on the true belief that with the right support, libraries are ideally positioned to become the community centers of information technology and learning that will fuel educational and economic opportunity for all of our citizens. Um, and really what um, PA Forward truly is founded on is that our residents need to have a fundamental understanding uh, of certain five certain knowledge uh, and literacy types 
basic literacy, information literacy, civic and social literacy, health literacy, and financial literacy to be successful citizens in a 21st century society. Uh, as I mentioned, PA Forward is based upon these five literacies and um, kind of as, as tools in providing information on those five literacies, really PA Forward as a statewide initiative focuses on two distinct areas uh, services that we can help you as a library develop uh, in terms of the services that you provide to your public. And those two areas are uh, really statewide partnerships and our STAR Library program. Now, in terms of the statewide partnerships, um, why we've developed these partnerships is because you as a library worker are a subject matter expert in the collection, organization, and access of information. You are not a subject matter expert uh, specifically in diabetes or in voting rights or in estate planning. So what our statewide partnerships are, are meant to do is to provide subject matter experts to you um, who can carry out a program in your library in one of those areas. So, um, so therefore you don't have to be a subject matter expert in any of those areas, we can help connect you to individuals who can provide those programs. The STAR Library program is actually um, the newest development in the PA Forward program. So the STAR Library program began in 2017. Um, it requires libraries to brand the programs and the communications um, that you make to talk to your communities about how libraries across the Commonwealth are moving PA forward. There are several steps to becoming a PA forward star library. And um, for each of those steps, you do have to submit specific documentation that helps um, demonstrate that you have really incorporated those five literacies into your programming and communication. The star library program awards bronze, silver, and gold stars. So um, for a bronze star, there's a certain number of core literacy actions that you are um, asked to do, um, showing that you are using the language of PA Forward. Um, additionally, um, in the silver star, there's actually five silver star areas. Each of the silver stars represents a different literacy and shows that you are providing quality programming in each of the literacy areas in your library. And then finally, to achieve a gold star status, there are a, a number of additional actions that we ask that actually show that you have uh, incorporated PA Forward into your library completely. Um, and once you become a gold star library, you are able to communicate that uh, to your elected officials, to your uh, community at large, noting that the Pennsylvania Library Association has awarded this star status, and that star status was awarded by a, by a committee of your peers who have reviewed the programming that you're doing and have noted that you are providing quality programming in your library. Now, all of this that I've done as an introduction to what PA Forward is, is to kind of show you as a foundation about certain areas that you can use for your strategic planning. So um, a tool or an area that can be helpful to you in terms of strategic planning is our paforward.org website. Uh, paforward.org is a site that was designed to help you to communicate to your elected officials, to your board, to uh, members of the community, what PA Forward is about and why you are taking, uh, uh, taking part in this initiative. So moving towards uh, talking about some strategic planning um, needs, um, the paforward.org site is a great place for you to begin your strategic planning process. So one of the most important 
pre actual planning activity that you need to do in terms of strategic planning is to do a community needs assessment or a community survey. Not necessarily a survey, but to look around your community to find out what needs exist within your community that the library can work towards solving. Um, at our paforward.org site, we have collected many items which show needs on a statewide, on a national basis. Some of, some of those needs are things like uh, literacy rates, uh, percentages of people who don't know how to read a prescription bottle, uh, numbers of percentages of individuals who do not know the uh, different branches of government and that uh, therefore cannot fully participate in uh, their community and cannot fully participate in the, uh, um, organ uh, in, the, in the wheels of government out there. Many of those are highlighted on the site. Under those, right there, you see the stack of, we call them the book stack, basic literacy. Um, each one of those uh, tabs takes you to a specific kind of description of the problems that exist in our society that uh, deal specifically with each one of those literacy areas. Uh, there's descriptors, there's a, a full nicely kind of uh, statistical analysis, the types of things that you would use to uh, put into your strategic plan to make specific goals that you want to achieve in your, uh, with your strategic plan. Uh, in addition to the paforward.org website, the Pennsylvania Library Association also has our website, which is palibraries.org. And on at that site, you can get some, some very specific ideas as you take a look at uh, making some decisions about your strategic plan. One of those areas are programming ideas. The PA Forward Commons, which is uh, listed on the site, uh, provides you with hundreds of programs that other libraries have successfully carried out and gives you kind of an idea about what they did for their program and why they worked on that program. Um, also available at the site are marketing materials, uh, such as our communications and media, which gives you an annual calendar of events and shows you uh, like, uh, specific uh, observations, ties it to a literacy, give, um, gives you a deeper understanding about the observance, makes some suggestions about some uh, other, uh, um, other, area, uh, uh, um, other areas you can check out, websites, organizations that are associated. But broadly, it kind of, it gives you ideas about the types of programs that you can do when they would be when they would be good to do, and kind of why why was why were these events set up in the first place? So, at the between the paforward.org site and the palibraries.org site, there are a number of materials that you can use as a starting point to work on your strategic plan. Um, now quite specifically about what goes into and is made up of a strategic plan. Uh, we're calling this plan forward um, with PA forward. And much of the content that I'm going to talk about after this point was actually developed by one of our fellow li library workers in Pennsylvania, Robin Vitek, who is the director of the Mount Lebanon Public Library. And I wanted to just give uh, Robin a quick shout out and a thank you for putting together uh, these materials that I'm about to go through um, for the rest of my part of the presentation. So for a library just starting the planning process and without the benefit of professional assistance, uh, some libraries will hire a consultant to do a strategic plan. Many libraries I, under, I know cannot afford to hire a uh, consultant to work with you on a strategic plan. So many of many times it falls on an already overworked library director. But um, a plan does not have to be complicated. 
It does not necessarily have to be filled with, as uh, noted here, uh, sophisticated imagery. A strategic plan really needs to be simple. It, ideally, a strategic plan needs to be understood by the average user or patron of your library. The average user should be able to determine what you want to achieve in your strategic plan. A strategic plan is a framework and a guidepost for you to know what you're doing, but also to explain to the public why you're doing it, and what you're trying to accomplish. In the most basic form, a strategic plan needs to have three parts, a vision, a mission, and action steps. So a vision describes where you want to go. It's your library's overarching philosophy. And it's honestly, this is usually only a one sentence maybe two sentence statements. It's very high level and it may even be idealistic and it absolutely should be a reach. You should be trying to reach just something that's maybe just at your grasp or beyond your grasp. Um, a simple vision and you know a sample vision. Uh, I was at a, a, a conference a number of years ago and the uh, president of the American Library Association, who was the director of the El Paso Public Library, uh, was talking about their strategic plan. And their vision statement was very simple. The El Paso Public Library will be the greatest library in the world. Uh, it's quite a reach, but it's simple. And you clearly can see what they're trying to, you know, what they're trying to do. But you want to have your vision to just kind of be clear. You want to be, you want to be the place that people go to in your community. You want to be, uh, you want to be able to provide all the education, all the ed lifelong educational opportunities for your for your library users. It's a bit of a reach. It may be slightly beyond what you can grasp right now, but it's kind of where you want to go. Uh, it helps the public to understand who you are. The second part of that strategic plan is a mission statement. A mission statement describes how you will get to that vision. And there are practical large goals. Um, a bullet point mission statement makes it easier for the public to see the goals. Um, you can use each of the goals as a separate section in your strategic plan with action steps following each one. An example, is actually the mission statement for PA Forward. PA Forward's mission is that PA Forward will benefit Pennsylvania libraries and all the Pennsylvanians who use them by making library services available to all Pennsylvania citizens, strengthening state-supported library services and leveraging greater local and private support, providing more databases at a lower cost and a better statewide delivery system, uh, bolstering the recognized link between library service and workforce development, and raising the profile and importance of libraries and librarians. It, there, each one of those areas are, uh, are specific goals, um, but they're kind of broad and they're kind of, um, but they are all how we would achieve what our vision would be for Pennsylvania libraries. And probably the most detailed portion of your strategic plan should be action steps. The action steps are simply what they say, the actions you will take to achieve your goals and realize your mission. They're mini goals. Um, anytime you do an action step or create a goal, they should are best realized when they are, and it's using this is using a, a planning process, a planning a, a tool that's called SMART goals. SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. Um, when you uh, 
do your actions, you wanna make sure that the action steps you include in your strategic plan describe actions and are not feelings or concepts. It's actually something that you're going to do. Um, an example, um, I'll give you an example in a few minutes. Sorry about that. Um, they, you want to enable you to judge when you have met the goal in a quantifiable way. Um, you've met a target number um, and it's, or you have completed an action. You have met a certain number of things or you have said, yes, we have completed the action. Our, our actions, you and your staff are able to accomplish given your available time, education, experience, and resources. Actions need to be achievable. They're not the vision. They're not something that's beyond your reach. These should be something that you have the resources to actually accomplish. You have the time to accomplish. Very important to note, if you don't have the time to accomplish them, then you don't want to include those actions. You, if you do not have time to do that, to do them, um, you want to create something very realistic. They help to advance the library toward meeting the goals you list in your mission statement, and they specify a deadline for completion. It's not 20 years from now. You want to be, you want to be very specific that by September 30th you will have done X. Um, PA Forward has many aspects that can help you do that. Let's use an example for PA Forward Star Library Program. Let's say you have a goal in your mission that you wish to become a PA Forward Gold Star Library and maintain that Gold Star status. So number one, you might have a portion of your strategic plan that talks about program. And under programming, some very specific action items would be something like provide opportunities for library programs this year for all ages from each arm of the PA Forward Five Key Literacies Initiative um, to ensure broad and comprehensive choices for our patrons. And that happens to actually fill, um, um, uh, fill the obligation of one of the Star Library actions, literacy action number one. Or let's say you want to provide a series, you can be even more specific, sorry about that. Uh, you can provide a series of financial literacy programs during summer quest for middle school students that will introduce them to budgeting and saving. That fits two action steps within becoming a star library. It's a core action three and a financial literacy action one. So um, those are just some programming examples. Let's say you had some advertising goals in your strategic plan. Um, you wanna be recognized by the Pennsylvania Library Association by earning a bronze star and PA Forward Star program by December 31st, 2021 to better demonstrate our library's excellence to our patrons and the citizens of the community. That's a check box, you've accomplished it or not. Uh, a second action to remind key stakeholders of our commitment to provide top tier services we will advertise our PA Forward Star Library designation by including it in a staff in in staff email signatures, in social media posts, and on our websites. And then that actually uh, moves into a number of our bonus actions for attaining even more star status. And to demonstrate our library's excellence to a new audience, we will send a press release to our local newspaper during National Library Week announcing our PA Forward Star Library designation. Again, another bonus action. Um, in terms of, of service and of staff, you want to include PA Forward update report to each staff meeting agenda so that all staff are aware of how they can support this year's goal of earning a bronze star and so that contributions by staff are regularly recognized. Also a core action that you've talked about PA Forward at a staff meeting. Um, Another action item, simply put, is all full-time staff members will provide a PALA conference or work uh, will attend, sorry, a PALA conference or workshop this calendar year to learn about topics related to providing materials and programming that support PA Forward's five key literacies. Again, a simple action item. Um, and it's bonus action number 15. And by the way, um, by your attending this session today, you have actually attained bonus action number 15. Um, 
it's really a simple, this is really putting together a simple plan. And why you need to have a strategic plan is so that A, board members and other key stakeholders um, love to see that you are accomplishing what you set out to do. Re you want to report on the action items as you uh, attain them. Also, funders are one of those key stakeholders. So as you accomplish parts of your strategic plan, you want to let your funders know how you are achieving your goals. PA Forward gives a number of, of opportunities for you to put together a simple strategic plan, but it's a strategic, but it, uh, but having that strategic plan helps you to get and maintain and sustain the goals that you have for your library. Um, I will be sharing this slide of uh, PA Forward, my contact information, my email address is simple. It's rob at palibraries.org. And at this point, I'm going to end my slideshow and I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl Thomas, who is going to um, move on to show you a, a, a specific example. Thank you, Rob. So as Rob said, I'm Cheryl Thomas. I'm the acting director for the Erie County Public Library. Normally, I am the assistant director. And I've worked at the Erie County Public Library for about five years. Um, prior to that, I worked in libraries um, in California. So I'm really excited to share our current Erie County Public Library's current strategic plan um, and talk about our strategic planning process using PA Forward um, as a model. Um, I will say that this strategic plan was created in-house by Erie County Public Library staff. Um, and it was the first time that we had, to the best of my knowledge, the first time that we had um, done strategic planning in-house with prior plans um, coming from outside organizations. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and see if I can go ahead and bring that up. Let's see. Here we go. All right, so a um, little bit of background on the um, Erie County Public Library strategic planning process. Um, we had just come off a strategic plan that was from 2016 to 2020 that had been created um, through um, an, a separate organization that we had um, contracted with. So this uh, plan did a great job of creating a vision, a mission, goals for the library. Um, but some of the things that we had struggled with were really making concrete and achievable goals and progress on the plan. Um, there was a lot of um, very lofty uh, sentiment in that plan, sounded really great. But when we got into it, we got into the nitty gritty, it was kind of hard to figure out to know when we had achieved those goals. So one of the things that we had really focused on with our 2021 to 23 uh, strategic plan was looking at making sure all of the goals were very concrete, very achievable, so that whether um, it was myself, my colleagues, other staff members, outside partner organizations that we brought in, that we would know when we had achieved these goals. So when we started with our strategic planning process, we looked at the old plan, we took it apart, we dismantled it, and looked at what was good, what we wanted to keep, and what we wanted to change going forward. And as I said, the goals, making them very concrete and achievable was one of the main things that we wanted to change in the plan. The things that we did keep were our vision, our mission, and our um, values, which I'll share those a little bit later. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that this was very community oriented, that we got a lot of our um, goals for this plan from our community, from our staff, from our stakeholder boards, whether it was the advisory board, um, the Friends of the Library, um, the Erie Regional Library Foundation, and then also our patrons to make sure that we are very transparent throughout the process um, and that we made, made uh, an effort to get community input and then involve it and weave it into everything that we did. So the first step beyond after we had kind of dismantled the old plan um, was looking at a timeline. So we were very um, purposeful in creating a plan for creating um, the strategy for the new strategic plan. 
Um, and with all of our planning, all of our purpose, it was completely derailed because this was 2020, um, COVID had just hit. So we, all of our plans for community um, input, for community sessions were completely changed. Um, we were unable to hold a lot of the in-person things that we had planned. A lot of the staff that we had planned on um, working on this were um, reassigned to other tasks, other departments in our health department um, and other COVID support things. So um, that just kind of goes to show that with the best intention and best planning, plans still went awry. That being said, we came up with a really excellent strategic plan. We uh, created some kind of backup plans instead of doing a lot of in-person sessions, instead of doing um, going out into the community and talking to community members. We went to our backup digital plans to go ahead and keep distancing in place. So we utilized SurveyMonkey to create a community survey to ask individuals what they liked about the library, what they wanted to improve, which library did they use? If they didn't use the library, um, what would bring them into the library? So it was very basic questions. They were not things that um, you know, were very difficult to think of. We tried to keep the language very simple, very straightforward. Um, the, after we had gotten the survey out, which we had 325 responses, um, we then did a series of community meetings. Um, these were virtual, these were online, and we did those um, so that we can get a lot of input from individuals. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, Rob, I know we're recording, but I... I... Uh, yes, we should I'm be. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, you were looking over and I wasn't sure if I was... I might have to start over, but... Can I... Um, yeah, I seem to be... Um, hmm. Can you pause the recording for a moment? So we are able to move our community meetings from planned in-person events at the library and in outside organizations throughout the community to virtual events. Um, so this was one of our first forays into the world of large-scale Zoom meetings. They actually went very well while we we're not able to get some of that in-person interaction we had hoped for. We were able to make these um, more widely available in the hopes that individuals who may not have been able to get into the library would attend these. So we got a lot of valuable input um, through that online community survey and then also through the virtual public meetings. Um, those are the ways that we had gone into looking for community input. And then beyond that, we wanted to make sure that we got a lot of input from our staff and from our various boards. Also, the Erie County Public Library is a department of county government. So as that, we did want to ensure that we had input from our uh, county stakeholders. So our county administration, other county departments, um, and our county council. So with that, we did send out our survey to all of the Erie County employees, other departments, to look how, the, how we could partner with other uh, departments, and how county leadership looked at the county library, ways that we could improve our services. We then uh, looked at staff meetings. So we did hold both virtual and in-person meetings with our staff. Managers were tasked with meeting with their departments, sharing about the strategic planning process, and asking those same questions that we had used in the community survey to their staff. So getting that kind of insider look at what do we do? What do we do well? What could we improve? Where, how do you see as a library employee, uh, the strategic plan really influencing and changing your department? So with all of that input, um, we then came together um, as a team, this was Marcus and myself, um, to really weave that all into a cohesive whole and turn that into a strategic plan. Um, so as you can imagine, that was a lot of input, 325 responses to our online survey, a number of public meetings under our belt, a number of staff meetings. Um, so we really looked at common areas where there are identified needs, um, and we wove those in together, kind of identified commonalities, um, and then pretty much sketched everything out into suggestions and goals, and then tried to weave that, weave that down and turn that into a cohesive plan. So we did, as I said, we kept our vision from our previous 
uh, strategic plan. And as Rob had mentioned, this was really important to keep this um, fairly short, very straightforward. So our vision with the library is an integral and inclusive leader in empowering individuals and connecting them to resources and opportunities that positively transform our community through discovery, learning, and innovation. So maybe it's still one sentence, it is a long sentence, but it really encapsulates what we want the library to be looked at as, as a leader and as a um, kind of conduit for individuals to move through and find what they need and they want out of their community and their library. Our mission was to build a culture of curiosity and creativity by connecting diverse people to information that ignites ideas, excites passion, and inspires action to improve our collective quality of life. This too, we kept from the old strategic plan, and it really can be condensed into ignite, excite, expire, um, which is in our library logo. So those, the vision, mission, and then finally the values, which we um, ended up with responsiveness, partnership, diversity, and dialogue. Um, overall, overarchingly kind of just condensed down what we had heard and all the feedback from the community and from our staff about what they saw the library as, um, and also where we wanted to position ourselves in the community. So from there, we got all the input, we reviewed it, um, we started putting it into a plan. Um, we ended up with three overar overarching um, areas, and these we pointed out as connections, collections, and capacity. Now, Marcus is going to talk a little bit more about connections when he talks about outreach. So I'll focus on some of our goals that we identified in collections and capacity. And these three areas were identified to give us areas to focus on specific goals. So again, we can go back to that being very concrete, very achievable. We know when we had met these goals. Um, in our section on collections, we, we wanted to talk about our resources and our services. Um, access, how do patrons utilize that? How can we make it easier for them to utilize what we already have? What don't we have that we need? Um, some of the goals that we identified as areas um, that we needed to improve um, in the collections area was continuing the expansion of digital collections, including um, local materials and needed digitization. So this is really gonna be a large theme in the current strategic plan, looking at digitization and access. So kind of drilling down into that, we are looking, what does that mean? So for each of our goals, we will identify the larger goal under its um, one of the three large categories and then have kind of a subset goal. Um, and this one was evaluating, sustaining, and expanding digital collections and resources. So for each of these, we have identified task leader and then we break it down into what steps need to be taken to achieve this goal. Um, this one is a three-year plan, so we do attach years and um, in some cases months, but mostly just years to when this needs to take place. So what we've done here is ensured that each goal has a leader and has um, a target um, date to be completed by or to complete, be completed within. Um, and that really, again, went back to being concrete and achievable. We wanted to make sure that each goal had an identified person who was going to be leading the charge towards ensuring this was completed in a timely um, and sustainable fashion. So just some other examples of goals that we have in here um, to create consistent engagement across all locations reflecting um, populations served by the library. This one we identified as the task leader, our adult services staff. So in our plan, we not only have managers and administration as leadership, we also have staff. And this is really important to ensure that we have buy-in across levels of our library, because we realize that a lot of these goals are not things that managers are going to be the best ones um, to be implementing. So making sure that the staff who are suggesting things and who have a lot of passion for ensuring that the library is reaching um, the places and individuals that it needs to. They are the ones, um, in many cases, best positioned to achieve these goals. Um, so also realizing that PA Forward is, is really encouraging collaboration across the state and across different organizations, we made an um, effort to ensure that we were including organizations that target populations that we need to improve our um, services to. And then rather than recreating the wheel, for instance, um, working with the Library of Accessible Media for Pennsylvanians, we realized that LAMP has a ton of resources available for individuals. So rather than us recreating something, um, we are going to partner with LAMP to provide um, these services. Um, other goals in our capacity section 
was to uh, maintain and improve all Erie County Public Library facility, facilities. Um, and this one specifically talks about a second bookmobile. Again, identifies a task leader, identifies things that need to be done in order for this goal to be achieved. Again, everything that we see is very concrete. It's very achievable. This is something that's replicable by other libraries. Um, again, realizing this plan was created um, by myself and by Marcus, neither of us had have um, experience or background in strategic planning. What we did was basically get community input um, and then put it into a, a workable plan, a work workable whole, um, which ended up being a, a PowerPoint pages um, a, going into each of the goals and then just those leaders and then the timeline, which is really, I think, what you need, um, which our, some of our previous plans had not had was just that timeline, the leader. We didn't know who was in charge of doing what. That was one of the things that we really wanted to address here. Um, developing a facilities master plan. One of those things that we'd always, talk, always talked about in the beginning, we didn't have it on paper. So having it written in our strategic plan ensured that it would be done and making sure that we um, take a very um, measured approach to it, making sure we're hitting all the things that we need to, not just creating a master plan for our facilities, but ensuring that it's hitting the areas of ADA, EDI, um, signage, outdoor space, everything that we think about. And then when we're in the moment, we just sometimes go past that and you know, don't, don't think about the needs. Um, other areas that we identified as, as areas of growth, professional um, growth for paraprofessionals. So again, things that we're looking at, we're distilling into the strategic plan. These are goals that we received from our staff, um, from our support organizations. Um, and at the end of the day, it was really something that we just we listened and then we found the goals and we just put, put steps into place that made them very um, achievable. One of the things that we have done to make sure that we are hitting our goals um, is have regular check-ins. So at one of our monthly manager meetings, we do talk about where we are in our goals. Uh, we have quarterly check-in meetings so that we have all pulled together all the staff who are working on strategic plan goals in that quarter, um, talk about where we are, where we need to be, what resources we need to pull in in order to hit our goals. Um, and that really the communication in that has been facilitated by the strategic plan by making sure this is available to everyone, um, that everyone knows where we are, what we're trying to do with this plan. So just some other um, examples of goals that we created, um, reviewing our policies, ensuring currency accuracy, um, and so forth, looking at ways that we can just make these more accessible. Um, developing plans for improving library administration. Again, all things that make sense, but you just need to have them on paper um, to do. Um, our idea lab is uh, a maker space, but we need to look at um, sustainability and accessibility of the space. Um, popped it into the strategic plan, made sure we identified a task leader, created steps for making sure that happens once we no longer have um, grant funding and creating long range digital strategies. So all things that are needed and that are kind of PA forward supported goals ended up in our strategic plan. Um, and kind of just to, to, to wrap up, going back to just making sure our goals were concrete, that they were achievable. We had a plan for, for getting there. Um, it sounded like a huge undertaking when we initially went into the plan, having no background in strategic planning, um, but just by opening that door and asking for community feedback and then taking the time to really look through um, what we received from the community, what we received from the staff, and then honestly just laying it out and seeing what the commonalities were um, really made this pretty straightforward to put together um, and not a lot of the steps that we outlined as um, goals in our plan were really a reach. I think they're all common sense. Um, and again, it was something we did in-house, specific goals using PA forward, the resources that are available. There are so many resources um, available once you get into the process to make it really, really very workable. Um, but a lot of that was reaching out to the community, which segues into um, what Marcus will be talking about, um, outreach um, and making sure that what we're doing is really what the community wants. To, um, to have from their library. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Marcus. Recording. 
Well, thank you very much, Cheryl, and hello to everyone, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is Marcus Hugh, and I'm the Outreach Services Manager here at Erie County Public Library. And uh, today I have the privilege of talking to you briefly about the PA Forward and Outreach um, and how they in intersect here at Erie County Public Library. So um, as you can see, uh, we did a lot of work and extensively with our strategic plan and we identified three areas which uh, our acting director Cheryl mentioned, uh, connections, collections, and capacity. Um, I'm gonna briefly just go over what connections means to us here at the library. Um, because connections are very, very important to the success of our services here at ECPL, so much so that when you read our strategic plan, it is the first concentration that we focus on when we are building our path forward. So as we understand that the trajectory of library services are shifting and has shifted, we believe that by facilitating interactions to unlock and harness the, the curiosity, creativity, and entrepreneurial spirit of our thriving community, that by doing so, we can increase our engagement and impact that we have on the community. So what does that look like? What does that mean? Who are we connecting with? Who are we seeking to connect with? Well, number one, we're seeking to um, connect with and keep that connection with current users of the library, our current patrons. Secondly, uh, our partners by maintaining and developing relationships with community businesses and institutions. So maintaining the relationships that we currently have, as well as developing new relationships that will enhance our ability to connect uh, throughout our community. And thirdly, non-traditional users, individuals and families who do not traditionally use and utilize library resources. So that may be a new American family, or that may be a uh, person who may not have ever been into the library for whatever reason that may be. But we wanna make sure that we are connecting with all three of those persons and we map that out, I'm sorry, all three of those categories of persons or families in our strategic plan, we do map that out. How does PA Forward connect with all of this? So here is what the framework does. By using the PA Forward, Forward framework, of the basic literacy, information literacy, civic and social literacy, health literacy, and financial literacy. ECPL it is enabled to number one, develop and plan programming that meets real life needs and support the growth in our community. Secondly, it helps us to develop specialized engaged outreach efforts that will build relationships with the community that we serve. Thirdly, it ensures that we are providing well-rounded opportunities and access for library of library resources for the community that we serve. So we're making sure that we are engaging our community in these three ways, in these three areas, by using the five literacies of the framework of PA Forward. So what does that look like in real time? So programming, in terms of programming, which is one of the ways that we are uh, able to connect as a library with our community, with our partners, uh, through programming, we want to continue to develop programming that is available to all, utilizes greater efficiencies and reaches previously underserved communities. So we wanna enhance our programs by using PA Forward. So we're using the framework as an enhancement for um, the way that we program. Secondly, we wanted to develop training to address the digital divide with equipment and training. So we wanted to make sure that individuals, families in our communities, young or old in our community, are able to come to the library and be trained on a number of different uh, digital resources that we have or that we will get uh, per their request and give them the opportunity to advance themselves and learn a skill or a re and, or, and or take advantage of a resource that previously they have not. And lastly, we want to reduce social isolation by hosting low cost social networking style events that are connecting patrons one to another. And as Cheryl mentioned, some of these things did not take uh, flourish, did not come to fruition or manifest because of COVID-19, but they are high priority moving forward. In terms of outreach, we want to develop a unified, a unified framework for outreach services that prioritizes partner relationships based on identified needs. So not just 
making partners because it seems good or it sounds good or to have a one-off great event, but actually making something that is uh, creating a partnership that is strategic, that is sustainable, and that will give people resources that they can have over a long period of time. Secondly, proactively through outreach, initiating outreach based on community needs. So again, not waiting for institutions or waiting for businesses or waiting for community needs to come to us, but rather we identify community needs and initiate outreach based upon that need and bring the resources that we have at the library to the community. Again, we wanna reach non-library users through diverse channels. And, and one of the ways that we have identified reaching them is through partnership. Partnership is going to be huge because oftentimes partners are connected to the people, the families, the individuals whom we are trying to reach. So that is oftentimes connecting with the school district to get library cards to kindergartners or the city mission uh, or the local housing authority to get after school programs and, and children from the housing authority to after school programs here at the library. And finally, we want to create and promote community driven heritage initiatives that we are ensuring that we are uplifting cultural and social awareness and opportunities to the community for them to express and experience true diversity. So here's what that looks like at Erie County Public Library. In short, this is the engagement through PA Forward that we hold after school hours and teen reading lounge, which promotes basic literacy. All of Us PA, which is a health program here in the state of Pennsylvania that seems to be uh, rather new, but it also has some uh, uh, far reaching, I believe, um, benefits that it supports health literacy. Saturday computer classes, every Saturday at 930, we are holding com computer classes here at, at ECPL and that supports information literacy, credit repair and financial literacy classes that is supporting financial literacy. Northwest PA history programming, that's a, that supports our civic and social programming that, that also encompass displays that, that, um, that are on display for several months at a time. We have story time and take home boxes that supports our basic literacy for youth and children. Senior chair aerobics and death doula supports our health literacy. Co-Starters Entrepreneurial Program, which supports financial, but also in, in, it also supports the information literacy. Naloxone Education and Giveaway, we partnered with our local health department uh, to do that educational seminar and as well as uh, give that resource away and that supports health literacy. And lastly, but not least, the Heritage Burley Education Project that we are currently working on here at the Erie County Public Library in collaboration with our partner, the Harry Bur the Burley Legacy Alliance, uh, which supports our civic and social literacy. All of these are the ways in which we are using and employing uh, outreach efforts coupled with the framework of PA Forward to impact our community, to engage our community, and to bring the resources that we have and have mapped out strategically in our strategic plan to the to the county of Erie, which serves, which we where we serve over 2,000 people. Uh, it has been my pleasure today to bring uh, this to you. My name again is Marcus Shu. I'm the Outreach Services Manager at Erie County Public Library. Uh, my information is there. You can reach me at mule at eriecountypa.gov or at 814-451-6959. Again, it's been my pleasure and I thank you so much. Thank you, Marcus. And thank you, Cheryl. And I thank everyone for attending our program today.